Salutations all and welcome to Basic Public Speaking. I'm Christy Thomas and this is the video lesson lecture on visual aids and presentation presentational aids. Now, I'm going to discuss various aids you can use, but then I'm also going to shift it to how it works for online, for online courses such as this one. So, when it comes to visual aids in presentations, speeches, whatever it may be, there's many different routes to go. You can do a physical visual aid, and what I say, perhaps you're teaching someone how to do a cartwheel, or perhaps you're teaching someone how to draw, or to paint, or to play a guitar. So, the visual aid is the actual process. Um, I say that because how-to videos always require a visual aid. So, it would be sitting down and showing, okay, so step one, prep, you know, it's prepping yourself. And you're doing, so the, the visual aid is the actual process itself. There's also, when it comes to visual aids or presentational aids, pictures. You can think of perhaps they could be handouts that it can be given, or you could have stands set up with enlarged photos. You know, maybe you're talking about how a carburetor works. So you have enlarged photos of the different um, pieces, like in like photos of the inner workings, or how whatever the case may be. Or, you know, you have option A, 1, 2, and 3, and perhaps you have enlarged pictures to show to go with that as well. So, so far, you can physically show how to do something, as in you are presenting, or perhaps you have an assistant or a helper that is doing the physical process. Think of, like, cooking shows with the physical process is they show you, you know, here are my ingredients, this is what you need, and then they show you the process that they use to create that certain dish. Stovetop, an oven, what, you know, what do you need? Oh, it really helps if you have this kind of particular pot or these kind of noodles or, you know, you want to cook the butter till it's brown and do they, you know, think of when I say physical, that's what I'm talking about is you're seeing process in time. There we go. You're seeing the process in time. So there's a lot of uh, cooking shows is my easiest route to go, but there's also like other shows that show in time, um, sporting, uh, there's numerous things that follow the in time process. And again, like I said, pictures, and it could be hand physical handouts that you hand out to people, or it could be enlarged photos, or it could be pictures that are behind you projected on a screen. Now this is going to kind of blend into the next one, which is a PowerPoint presentation. This is where technology comes in with your presentational aids. You can create a PowerPoint slideshow. Some say they're different, some say they're the same, some are changing, but you can create a PowerPoint slideshow to go along with your presentation. And a lot of people do, and in that, you can have imagery, you can have quotes, you can have statistics, you can include all the things. You can include all the things in a slideshow or presentation. A slideshow or PowerPoint, excuse me. Now, if a PowerPoint visual aid is the route you're going slideshow, there's some things that you kind of need to keep in mind when you're using technology. One, is the space you're going to equipped for that? There's some spaces that, yes, they have projectors. They have the multimedia resources needed for slideshows. Okay. Does, is it saved on a format that's universal? You know, can it easily go from... And do you have a backup? Because sometimes technology fails us and we may have it on a jump drive, we may save it to a certain file. Do you have a backup? Is it equipped? All that comes into play when you're doing visual aids. Now, more in depth with slideshows and PowerPoints. And this is kind of across the board when you're presenting anything in technology. 
when you're creating a slideshow or a slide, if you're just, when you're creating a slide for multimedia purposes, you want to be concise. You don't want too much information on the page. Like you don't want to have this huge excerpt, Shakespearean quote. You want the gist. Because if you have too much information on the screen, your audience will have issues A, with A, either visibility, because there's so much to look at, and you don't know, is it a small screen behind you? Is it a large screen? Or is it something they can follow along? Like, do they have their own personal computers or iPads or something in front of them that they can follow along? Like, that comes into play when you do visual aids as well. So, you want to make the information... You're not going to put everything you say verbatim on a slide. That's not, that's not the purpose. Maybe it's a statistic, jarring or alarming or shocking. Perhaps it's an image. It could be both. Perhaps it's a quote. You know, maybe it's a comparison. This is what it was in 2007 compared to today in 2023. It could be clips. You can also insert clips that kind of go with the point. Don't make it a long clip. I don't want to watch the Titanic movie, the entire movie for your project. Put in a clip, you know, a short clip, and give yourself that time. Don't talk over the clip. If the clip is poignant to this, the presentation, then yes, by all means, use the clip, but don't talk over it. You know, say what you need to do beforehand to inform the audience this is what you're looking for or what you should be watching for, and then recap it. It's the same way when giving presenting anyway. With presentations, it works wonderfully if you tell the audience what you're going to talk about, talk about it, and then wrap it up and just kind of discuss what you just talked about. It, it's a way of just keeping it in mind. And like I said, you want to be kind of concise. You don't want too much information because you don't want to A, lose your audience. B, visibility comes into play. If you have a lot going on behind you, they're going to be more intent like trying to read what is posted, what's going on. If you're doing a slideshow of images, don't make the images go too quick because then you're like, oh, I missed something. Do I need, you know? So it's, a, it's also a pacing thing. Now, when it comes to creating slides, you don't want too much like flashy, flashy going on because you're, again, you're going to distract your audience. Solid colors is a wonderful way to go in slides. Now, that's not to say like an introduction slide or a conclusion slide or an image slide has to be a solid color, but on the slides that have text, you want it to be a solid color. You want the text to be easy to be to read, and you don't want to use a really crazy wild font. For the purposes of using text in a slide, you want to ensure your audience can read it and understand it. So it wants to be, you know, Times New Roman, pretty standard and easy legible. I'm sorry. My cat is going crazy, so if you've heard noises, it's because she's all over the place. And I'm trying not to be distracted by her climbing my chair. Anyway, solid color backgrounds, solid color font. Usually, like, white works fabulously against solid colors, and it pops. Because, again, something you maybe don't even think about is, and we talk about when we talk about audience, is, do you know the room? Is it dark? Is it light? Like... What are you competing against with visual? It comes into play with the vis visibility of your slides. So, slides are solid colors. <laughs> your font should be a legible, plain, easy font that's not too chaotic, not too wild, not too crazy. Something easy to read. Again, so when it comes to slides and multimedia, solid colors, bold, not a lot of flashy colors, not a lot of designs. You don't want a striped background. You don't want all kinds of crazy images popping up while your text is going on. You can use imagery, but space it out. Like a slide of text, a slide of imagery, you know. If you're using clips, make the clips concise and short so that it meets the criteria and you're not losing your audience again. What else is coming to visual aid? Discuss font. Um, it's just pretty much a good rule of thumb when it comes to multimedia. Don't make it too busy. 
if it's too busy you're just going to lose your audience they're not going to get the message they're going to be distracted or they're going to just like not be interested because it's so busy so you see where we're going with there so there's multimedia there's a physical process there's pictures um now let's kind of shift focus on presentational visual aids. I was buffering, sorry. I'm trying to think of the right word I wanted to use there. And discuss how you can use visual aids in a speech that you're giving online. So here we go. Your second the second main speech for public basic public speaking course, one of the technical requirements is use of a visual aid. Acceptable visual aids for this course. And I, hmm. let me stress this. Let me, let me, let me say this out loud to the world. I must see your face. You can't just do a PowerPoint presentation. You, you gotta be visible. So, if you can green screen it behind you and be like, and then, you know, slide one here, you see, blah, 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 whatever the case may be here. But I gotta see you. So ways that you can do visual aid. You can show us the process. Now, I know it's hard that if you're showing us a physical process, maybe you're changing a tire, maybe you're changing oil, you're cooking a dinner, you're doing this, you're doing that, whatever the case may be here. It can be tricky to show every single step. I get that. I'm not asking. You don't have to show me every single step. So I will probably use food the most for my reference here because it's just, the kitchen is my happy place. So there you go. Perhaps you're showing us how to make something. Maybe it's, you have a game day tradition that you always make sausage balls. So you could show us in your kitchen. And again, video editing apps come in great especially with the the how, the how to project to help you kind of seamlessly move it along now with that being said perhaps your first clip is showing us the ingredients you need the tools that are needed you know it could be the ingredients it could be a specific you know pot or pan or utensil that you use in mixing them and then, you know, you show the tools. Well, I make them in my oven, or I make them in my air fryer, or I make them in a crock pot, or I do this, or I do that. And then maybe the next step is telling us what you do with steps. Okay, so we combine our wet ingredients. Again, we'll say sausage balls. We combine our wet ingredients, and we saute that in a pan. Okay? You do it over the heat. And then perhaps maybe you show a video of you putting it in. Or, like I said, you don't have to show us every step. But you show us pieces of the steps. You know, if you're putting something in the oven, maybe you show us putting it into the oven. Or perhaps you show us what it looks like once all the ingredients are combined before you, I don't know, roll it out. Or if you're making brown, if you're making brownies, perhaps you show us what it looks like combined before you put it into a pan. Or if you're making cupcakes, you show us what the, it, what the consistency, like this is the consistency you're looking for before you use this scooper and you scoop them into your cupcake liners. Okay, then you're like, and then you want to wait the time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, boom. And after 18 minutes, you pull them out of the oven, you stick a toothpick, maybe you show us putting it, or however you check for doneness. Once it comes out clean, you know you're done. Let them cool. Three hours later, and you ice. And I said sausage balls, and I went to cupcakes. You don't have to show, I don't have to see you put every single ingredient into the bowl. I don't have to see you mix everything. I don't have to, like, I don't have to see every single step. But your visual aid could be showing us the ingredients, showing us a couple steps in the process. What the consistency looks like. What, do you have a special pan? Like, do you make a bundt cake? Uh, do you make zucchini bread? Do you make steaks? Like, you know, is it something, are you a grill master? Or maybe you just like to make, I love to make, I know they were big rage years ago and I've done them for decades, charcuterie boards, but I also call them graze boards and snack boards and dinner and I do it holidays, I make them for, anyway, if it calls for something, I'm gonna put it there. Perhaps you like to put together 
snack boards or dinner boards just you know quick bites and eats maybe you love to do just hol holiday themed ones like maybe you do one for fall maybe you do a halloween one or a christmas one or a thanksgiving one or a valentine's day one or birthday ones whatever the case may be here i made them for i i'm like I, i'm telling you i make them for everything at my house and they're usually themed to go with it i put stuff that you find or maybe you want to tell us how to create the perfect popcorn bar you know, get your popcorn and these are the seasonings that you get this is the the toppings you could do sweet and savory or you can do like spicy or you could do salty or you could do cheesy you know whatever floats your boat we're not here to yuck your yum you don't have to do a how-to on food i just generally always use food as my example so you can show us that process as well um and it's the same way for other things. Perhaps you're telling us how to do a perfect layup. So you're, you're, you're discussing with us. Another way you can do it is you can tell us the steps on how to get from point A to point B to point C. And then once all the points have been discussed, you show, and now let me show you an example. If you follow my steps, you too will be able to create this. So then you show us the full, perhaps you're showing us how to do a layup. Perhaps you're showing us how to do a cartwheel. Perhaps you're showing us how to kick the perfect soccer ball, how to um, cast the perfect line, whatever the case may be here, you can go there. Uh, you can also show steps if you're sketching or painting, you know, first one, gather your materials. You know, do you have a specific brand of paint you like to use? Are you acrylics? Are you watercolor? Are you oil? You know, do you have... Do you have a preference? Maybe you paint with spray paint. Or maybe you're a makeup artist. Perhaps you want to show us how to create the perfect wing liner or how to contour or whatever the case may be. Perhaps you make jewelry. Perhaps you really are into like car detailing. You know, it's just a process. It's a how to. So you can show us. You can show us steps as you go and then a finished product. You can discuss your steps and then show us a full-on visual of how, if we followed your steps, how we get from A to B to C to D, you know, by following your steps. Uh, you can also kind of, you can do a PowerPoint presentation box. I need to see your face, so you kind of want to, I say green screen. This will not be a green screen. What you're seeing is my living room wall, but, you know, a green screen. Or you can also show pictures or imagery as well. Like hold up and discuss, da 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 da. You know, it's a process. So you, I say this when it comes to giving online how-to speeches with visual aid, you can get really creative, like super creative, on how you choose to show your visual aid, how in depth or enveloped. Because when you're in person, there's only so much you can do in person on using visual aid but online I mean you think of it there are tons YouTube videos social media platforms that's their whole shtick they are doing a process and a lot of people do processes and they discuss Bailey Sarian she does murder makeup Mondays mystery murder anyway she puts on makeup and she discusses a murder show she doesn't tell you what she's doing but she discuss you know that's her, that's her shtick. That's her thing. Um, but like I said, you know, social media, there's all kinds. They're like, get ready with me. And then they talk and tell you a story or this or that. You're just telling us a process. Choose something you love. Choose something you enjoy. Something you got a working knowledge of. And go from there. Get creative. Have fun with this. You know, perhaps you want to tell us the best ways to tell hiking trails. And you can be, and you can show us. Like you can show visual aids. You can, it's. You can use imagery. You can show a physical process. You can discuss it. Then show the process. If we were to follow your steps, you know, show us a few things here and there. If you're cooking something, what's your ingredients? What's it going to look like before it goes into the cooking phase? What's it look like afterwards? And is it like, is there something after it's cooked? Like, I say that like if it's ice. Like if you have to ice something or, you know, a lot of times when you cook chicken or turkey or some kind of um, protein like that, you let it rest so that it all comes to, uh, 
unless you like it well done, you don't generally let it rest. <laughs> you know, that kind of process. Or are you really like into assembling snack boxes or lunches or this or that? Or if you're changing a tire, you know, tell us the tools that we need to change that tire. Show how to loosen the lug nuts on getting the tire off or and how to properly use a jack like these little things you don't have to show me every single verbatim step but get creative with it anyway that was just a quick little there'll probably be another video posted and it's one that i recorded numerous years ago i just wanted to do one that is more in depth talking about it as an online class all right folks as always any questions or concerns please reach out to me and i'll get back to you as soon as i can thanks so much i hope you have an amazing day and an amazing week